Hi and welcome to this video about protected processes. I mentioned protected processes multiple times in earlier videos, so I thought it would be a good idea to give you some more details about protected processes. So what are protected processes? The idea started in Windows Vista and it was very limited at the time. It was mostly used for protection of uh, DRM content, that is digital right management uh, content. And the idea was that you can't get a very invasive handle into these protected processes. You can only use something like process query or set limited information, which means you can get very superficial information about the process, but nothing invasive. You couldn't inject anything into it. You you couldn't look at the list of modules loaded by the process. All these things require much more powerful handles like process query information, process VM write and things like that. So it wasn't uh, possible to do with these uh, protected processes. And it doesn't matter if you're an administrator or running an even a local system, it doesn't matter. If you're in user mode, you just can't and that is it. So the idea was uh, implemented over some very uh, few select uh, executables uh, when running as protected. And of course they must be signed by Microsoft so you can't just decide that you'd like to create your own executable that's running protected. That would be very nice and very powerful to do but you just can't do that. And I'll give more details about that uh, very soon. And so it was very limited at the time in, in the Vista time frame, just for some executables Microsoft deemed as important to run protected so they can't be invaded by anyone in user mode. And so the idea has been significantly enhanced in Windows 8.1 when protected processes Lite came into being where things were extended in two basic ways. One of them is there now there are multiple protection levels. Not all protected processes are the same. Some are more protected than others. And it means that the more protected process can access a less protected process without restriction, but not vice versa. And the second thing is that third-party executables are now also eligible and this applies to anti-malware solutions, those that create uh, companies that create antiviruses, uh, EDRs and things like that, so that they can't be terminated uh, by malicious code, for example. Some malicious entity might even be able to, uh, to uh, escalate privileges and become an administrator, still it cannot kill those uh, protected process light uh, processes. In fact, uh, most of the system processes today that uh, Windows comes built in with are uh, protected with the PPL approach. So here's a quick look at what the levels are for protection. And they start with level 7 all the way down to level 0, which is basically means not protected. And uh, you can see that there's a Win System Signer, that's kind of the most protected where the system process is used uh, for that. You can't invade the system process, which makes sense. That's the process holding on to kernel stuff. And also minimal processes like the memory compression process and registry processes are also uh, immune from uh, termination and immune from uh, invasive access. Also, there's, uh, and then there's other levels like WinTCB and Windows and LSA and all these things. I'm not going to cover every one of them, I just want to mention a couple. One of them is LSA. LSA means that LSAS can be run as protected. And on Windows 10 and initial versions of Windows 11, it wasn't configured to run protected. It's something you can set up in the registry. And the reason it might be weird because it seems to be a good idea to have LSAS run protected because you know there's uh, an attack called uh, pass the hash or pass the ticket where uh, some malicious entity that has admin privileges can um, reach out into the address space of LSAS and get the hash of the user's uh, login and then use that hash to, uh, to log in to other machines uh, in the domain. And so this kind of thing uh, needs to be fixed in some way and one way is to use virtualization based security with something called credential guard it might be familiar with uh, this is the modern way of protecting against that uh, but not all systems necessarily support that it requires some uh, hardware um, hardware things like uh, hardware support from the processor uh, most do support but still it's not mandatory to turn on necessarily. So another option might be uh, to have ELSAS run protected, but this wasn't the default uh, initially in Windows 10 and also in several 
version of Windows 11 and the reason is for compatibility because if you have some custom mechanism to log into the system maybe with a, a fingerprint or a retina eye scan or whatever that may be whoever produces this custom mechanism will have to provide an authentication package which is a DLL that LSAS needs to load in order to pass the information for testing whether the uh, the thing that special thing like a fingerprint or whatever is actually uh, valid or not and so one of the rules for protected process that they cannot load uh, DLS that are not signed by Microsoft and that would be problematic if a third party wants to create this custom authentication mechanism LSAS wouldn't be able to to load it so for compatibility reasons this is not enabled by default but now in today's Windows 11 versions it is enabled by default and you can definitely enable that by making the change to the registry and LSAS runs protected which means that you can't from user mode invasively access its internals it doesn't mean that credential guard is useless it's not because it can also protect uh, it does that kind of protection even from from the kernel not not just from user mode and then level number three which is also interesting because it is the one that Microsoft is allowing third parties to use so if you have a company that creates an antivirus anti uh, malware solution of sorts they can ask Microsoft to sign their user mode service and then that uh, one is going to run protected and that's in fact is ha actually happening for many of the EDR providers like Microsoft's own Defender which is treated as as a third party uh, for that purpose uh, and also others like uh, CrowdStrike, Sentinel-1 and, and others uh, and so that's something that is also available for others not just internally for Microsoft so let's take a look at some of the information I've just mentioned and show a few more interesting details about protected processes. So first, how can we see protected processes? If you try to use something like Task Manager, there's no indication of protected process there, so no point in looking in Task Manager. So here's Process Explorer, and there are two ways to look at protected processes. One of them is that there's a color for that. So if you go to Options, Configure, Color, there's a color for protected processes. Uh, we can see it right here, it's uh, by default a color called Fuchsia, in fact I added this thing to Process Explorer back in 2016. In any case, uh, by default it's not enabled, so you need to enable that and then you'll find that some of these processes now have this color which indicates these are protected processes. You can see there's several of those uh, lying around. And in order to make it easier to maybe even sort by protection, you can right click and go to the columns and add the protection column, which is right here. We can just add that. And once we have that protection column, uh, we can just move it around maybe to some more convenient location here. And with protection, you'll notice that if we sort by protection, there's lots of protected processes running right here. And it also gives us information about the signer level and whether that's the PPL new model or the classic protected model which is still supported for compatibility reasons and so what we have here you can see here a few examples here's SMSS and WinInit and services and CSRSS these are various system processes you can see they're using uh, the PPL model that's the term light here and WinTCB that's signal level 6 if you look at the previous slide if you could do that then you can see that it's level number 6 which is almost the highest one several are not really written here Process Explorer has no uh, access even to that but this is really the WinTCB stuff um, that uh, sorry this that's the uh, the highest the Win system uh, level level number uh, 7 and you can see there are others uh, there's a uh, something here uh, uh, called the Windows sign, that's level 5. So it's used by several important SVC host processes and some stuff related to Sense, which is the Microsoft Advanced Threat Protection uh, offering for enterprises that unfortunately I have running on my machine. And then you can see that uh, that's also for MSNs. That's in fact something I was part of uh, at the time. And you can see here there's a NIST nice SRV and MS MPNG. This is the classic Windows Defender offered freely uh, to anyone. And you can see it uses the anti malware uh, signer level, which is level 3. So it's less protected than this one, but still it is protected from other user mode colors. So you can see this protection stuff. So, how does that? Um, like look in practice. So let me uh, show the lower pane here. So if I look at some protected process and look at uh, things like DLLs, 
I seem to see the DLS that are loaded into NIST SRV and MSNs and all the other, uh, other protected processes, which might seem a bit weird. I mean, I just said that uh, we're not supposed to be able from user mode to get this invasive access into protected processes. And indeed, I, I wasn't uh, lying. The thing is that the way this works is with the driver, the kernel driver that Process Explorer has and uses its driver to actually access the information or open a handle, a powerful handle to the process. And then that handle is returned to user mode and then you can see anything that you want. In fact, this is something that has changed in uh, version 17 of Process Explorer. Previously, it wasn't like that. And you couldn't really see all these things. In fact, I made a little change here uh, in Process Explorer to make it uh, possible to see that. But uh, for threads, for instance, you can see something looks uh, very fishy here. We don't see like a good starting address. Anytime I try to like look at the call stack, I get unable to access thread. These are protected threads within a protected process, which means uh, you also can't get invasive access to them. In this case, Process Explorer doesn't use its kernel driver to bypass that uh, limitation. So in fact, these threads are indeed inaccessible and you can't get good information about them. Now, to show you that indeed uh, you can't see normally the DLLs in a process, of course you can try it yourself by writing some code, use the open process function, and you'll see you won't be able to get anything beyond process uh, query limited information, uh, even if you are running as administrator or even as system, it doesn't matter, you can't just do that. And so uh, what I have here is the old Process Explorer, uh, the old I mean before version 17, where the Process Explorer didn't use its driver to have the extra access for protected processes. So here goes, here's CSRSS notice. I'm looking at DLLs here at the bottom, there's nothing. If I look at something else, I do see DLLs just as I would uh, expect, but looking at any protected process here, I get completely nothing. Whatever protected process I'm trying to look at, uh, we see nothing, no DLLs for instance. Uh, and, uh, and again, this is because you can't open an invasive handle and Process Explorer here doesn't use its uh, powers uh, from, uh, from the kernel driver. Notice, by the way, LSAS here is running protected in this Windows 11 virtual machine, but on my machine it's actually not running uh, protected. I'm using Windows 10 and I have not changed the registry value here to run that as protected, but it is protected with the sign of LSA. As I mentioned, that's uh, level uh, 4, which is kind of somewhere in between there. And so that's one thing to see. Now, as I mentioned, protected processes are not really protected from the kernel. They're just protected from user mode. And the way this is implemented is simply by uh, setting a, a flag or actually a value, which is the signer level with uh, an addition of 201 indicating whether that's a protected, classic protected or protected light. So you have values like uh, 72 and 61 and things like that, where the six is the signer level and the one is uh, indicating PPL. And so the higher the level, the more protected the process is and just zero means not protected. So we can look at these things using a local kernel debugger here. So let's uh, take a quick look at that. Let's uh, look at uh, one of the processes here. Uh, so let's say we have these, uh, well, we can look at LSAS, why not? Seems like a nice enough process. So the process is uh, 1240, that's the process uh, that I need. So we just need uh, the address for the e-process structure. So let's find that, 1240, uh, and then just uh, let the debugger find the, uh, the process there. So so here's Elsa. So what I wanted is this particular address. And if I look at this address using the NDT command with eProcess, I look at this address, there's a member there called protection. And protection is the member that uh, indicates the protection level of the process. I'm also using a dot here to just a little trick to open up if there is a structure or union there. So you can see the protection member does exist and the level here is 41. Remember four is the signer level and one means PPL, where two means the classic protected. So the number is 41. As another example, let's take a look at some CSRSS process uh, like we've seen here. So here's a CSRSS process with ID of 888. Okay, let's go with that. So again, let's look at process and the process ID is 888. 
and we have to use 0n to make uh, that uh, it's going to be a decimal representation for us because the default is hex and just show me the minimal information so again we have the address of this particular CSRSS let's go ahead and do the same thing let's just uh, move over here and just paste the different address you can see the value here is 61 because that's the level of the signer is called WinDCB which is 6 and it is a PPL process of 61 one of the nice things we can try is to remove the protection power of the process um, and we can do that from the kernel side of things because well in the kernel we can do anything we want so let's take ELSAS as an example and notice right now we see no uh, DLLs here so let me do some magic for you here by making sure it actually works let me make it, it is always on top already uh, so let's uh, go ahead and give it a shot and so we have the address of the the LSAS process right here so we're going to do edit binary so, uh, sorry edit byte we're just going to change a single byte we need to add the offset of the protection member on this particular system so that's the one and I'm going to specify zero here now watch carefully what happens in process explorer the DLS appear immediately as if by magic and that's because the process is no longer protected it's no longer protected we can now use uh, access it uh, in a more normal way now you notice that the color doesn't change in process explorer because process explorer is not expecting a process that was protected to become unprotected normally this is something that you cannot really do from user mode well you can't so it doesn't really examine the protection status in the way that uh, allows this to change the color just doesn't uh, anticipate that but from a DLL perspective it's always trying to open the handle and and that's why we get here the list of DLLs and we can take it back we can just make it protected again by returning the value 41 there or some other protection value technically and you can see all the DLLs magically disappear we're back in state where we don't see anything so just to uh, clarify here, the protection of protected processes is only from user mode. There's no protection from the kernel. From the kernel perspective, which in this case we see through a kernel, local kernel debugger, there is no protection. The processes are just like any other. They're fully accessible and nothing uh, can prevent us from accessing that from the kernel side of things. So just so we're clear and the idea here is that for anti-malware solutions we have a service which is running as protected hopefully after Microsoft has signed the, the binary then malicious actors that are in user mode can't terminate the process or do anything bad with it because it is protected but it's not protected against kernel powers so if the malware somehow is able to inject a, a rootkit or something into the kernel then protected processes absolutely mean nothing so that's the idea of protected processes, which is still, I think, a very significant and important protection mechanism in Windows to make sure that at least uh, those important processes or critical processes, some of them are not uh, possible to access in an invasive manner, no matter which user is trying to do the access and what other privileges that user might have.